In this video we're going to have a look at creating a histogram from some data in Excel. Excel doesn't really do histograms very happily so I think it'd be better if we took it into another environment. So I'm going to select this column of data which is mother's age of, uh, that's the age when mothers have their baby and uh, right click copy and I'll just pop it across to autograph. And here we've got uh, a 1D stats page right click I'm going to enter raw data which is what we've got on the clipboard right click paste now mother's age is the column header so if I press here it'll make the data set name that and also label the x-axis uh, the same name so off we go now what we've got here is some raw data so right click I can do a dot plot at this point it might be a good idea to just discuss uh, what are the ages that mothers have babies these days? So what's the youngest, what's the oldest, where's the mode, where's the uh, the, the median and so on. Uh, just get a good idea of its distribution before the computer presents you with the solution. So we click OK. Now is that what people thought? Uh, nothing much over 45 and uh, nothing much under 16 or 17. So this particular sample of course. Now if you want to make a histogram from this we have to group the data. At the moment it's still raw data so right click have to group it. That's not to say enter group data, that's a brand new group data set. We've grouped the existing data and it's offering a series of 50 in classes of 5, which is okay. I mean, it, it's thought it through and offered that. There are lots of other options here which we can uh, deal with at other times, like for example, you can make your class intervals unequal if you wish. You can enter your frequencies, continuous or discrete. We'll do that in a second and let's click OK. All that happens now is that it's gone yellow, it's a grouped data set and the right click now offers us all the things that require grouped data like histogram, cumulative frequency, a stem and leaf diagram and the table of stats. The histogram. We'll f start off with just straight frequency which strictly speaking isn't a histogram. So, so we click OK and it often shoots off the top so here we go, auto scale and uh, there is our distribution what we might do now is also notice that the animate object is there so we can change the class width if the class width is not 5 but 6 is this going to go up or down or what's going to happen well when you're just measuring straight frequency uh, if this gets bigger it's going, there's going to be more in there so it's going to go up let's have a look yes and generally if you increase it you could of course increase it forever it would be quite nice to do that and then we get one giant class width uh, from 0 to 50 or if you go the other way, you come all the way down pretty much to the raw data. So let's come back to say 10. Now let's do a couple of the really difficult concepts that uh, come up in stats. One is discrete and continuous. Now age is a funny one because uh, you are 20 until the second you become 21 and therefore it behaves like a continuous variable even though it is obviously discrete. Um, but supposing this was actually representing discrete data, maybe it's, uh, it scores on dice or something that has only 20, 21, 22. For that, 20 would be represented from 19.5 to 20.5 on this continuous scale. So if we do in fact double click on this and change this to discrete, you'll see what happens as I click OK, the whole thing shunts half to the left. There it goes. And uh, you can put that back as well. So we're actually going to leave it as continuous because that's the way age behaves. Uh, the next really difficult concept, if I double click on this, is what do we mean by frequency density? So let's suppose, for example, we want to, instead of 20 to 30, we want to have more information from here. I'm going to split this down the middle. So I want to have one class width from 20 to 25 and one from 25 to 30. Okay, so uh, there are at the moment 600, 700 and something, so I think there might be 300 and something in each, something like that. Let's supposing that's roughly what's going to happen. Well, clearly if those two disappear, we're going to end up with a distribution that no longer represents the overall shape of this uh, data. So I'm going to double click on this, and this time I'm going to enter the values manually. Okay, so here we go, and instead of... Uh, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. Instead of going 20 to 30, I want to put in an extra 25 in there. So I'm going to do 25, comma. 
Now that 734, when I recalculate, is going to split into two. 372 and 362. So I actually got this slightly the wrong way around. So we've now got um, unequal class widths being represented by a distribution that clearly is no longer the right shape. So this is where we need to think about this very carefully. And if we represent not frequency but frequency density, but I think a halfway point is to say let me let the unit be 10. So that stays where it is. So this area here represents the frequencies of this lot. And that's one unit. So one unit times that will be that um, frequency. This is a half a unit. So it's going to be um, doubled up. Let's see what, what happens. Yes, that's perfect. Um, so you can see very nicely that that uh, now restores the shape as it was. Now if we really want to continue this, though, we should have a frequency density of 1. That would make the total area equal to n, the total number of frequencies. And do an auto scale. So that brings it up to here. Probably don't need the dot plot anymore. And this is where you could, if you wanted to, fit a normal distribution. to It's not a particularly normal distribution. Uh, but uh, this is the way you would do it. Um, if you do this and fit to data, what it does, it scales the normal distribution up by n. So the normal distribution itself has an area of n, and so does the uh, histogram. So that's certainly one way of having a look at histograms from data in Excel.